Hey my people, uh, great to see you this evening. My name is Pastor M and welcome to Church for Business People. Uh, by the way, just let me know where you're checking in from, wherever you're from. Uh, just let me know on the comment line. Just let me know exactly what part of the city, uh, what estate, what, what city you're coming from or what even continent. I uh, would just love to connect with you uh, out there. Uh, and I'm so glad you're here tonight. By the way, we just, we've been having this great conversation about kingdom business. And so if you're into kingdom business, if, if doing business God's way even excites you in any one bit like it does us, the rest of us, then you are home. This is the place for you. So this May, we're focusing on rebuilding with wisdom. And, 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 and the, uh, you know, through this COVID-19 crisis, there's a whole rebuilding season that our businesses are entering into right now. And so uh, we've been talking about funding your business. How do you begin to find funds for your business without uh, going into debt? Tonight, we want to start talking about staffing your business. Uh, the other resource you need that is impro incredibly important for you is people. So we're going to be talking a bit about that this evening. And as we start, I want to ask you to do me a favor. Just hit share uh, on your browser. If you can just share, send somebody the, the link to this uh, or start a watch party. Do something that allows your friends to benefit from the wisdom, the godly wisdom we're going to be learning uh, this evening. And also, uh, there's a link, there's a pinned link on this stream. Uh, just click on that if you would like to join our WhatsApp community. There's a business WhatsApp community and what we've been doing is just receiving information, uh, receiving help that is specific for our businesses. And so if you would like that exclusive space to be part of that community, then hit that, that link. So we're going to start with worship as we like to. And the reason we start with worship is not because it's a thing to do or because we're Christians. We start with worship because that's the essence of kingdom business. It comes with recognizing who the true king is. And so let me just pray as we begin. Father, thank you for this evening. Can't wait for what you have for us tonight. As we worship you right now, I want to invite your people to raise their hands, to, to lift you up in their hearts, to put you above their businesses. And I pray that as we do so, that Lord, you would build a throne this evening and you would help us to access everything you have for us. We love you, Lord, and we pray all these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to another session of Church on Business. We have been doing this for a few weeks now and the responses have just been amazing. Uh, you know, just hearing the stories of people who are taking these truths and applying them in their businesses, in their lives, it's just powerful. So join us as we worship the King. Why do we do this? Because this is what I believe, that when we put God in his rightful place, everything else falls into place and it starts with our minds and our hearts and then flows on and is manifested in our businesses, in our lives, in everything else. And because when our hearts and minds are right, then we are okay. So join us as we sing. It might not be a businessy thing to do, but it's an awesome thing to do. So join us as we worship God. Let's go. Again, 
Oh, come on, guys. Like, if that doesn't get you moving, that God is a good God and he has your back, Webby, man, he's got our backs, he's got man. He's our backs. You know? He's never letting us go. He's never letting us go. Even if us guys let go, he'll always he, he, he doesn't let go, huh? That's right. Ah, oh, come on, man. That is so good. All right, so um, I was reading, um, I've been reading through the Old Testament, and, um, you know, for me, what's uh, so cool is there's some powerful moments mm. You know, in, in, in that and and in Isaiah, it talks about how he will make a way, right? Right, and and he'll make a way from in the wilderness. You know, and I was just thinking about that, like what what's his story about making a way in the wilderness? Like, you know, how does that actually happen? How does this wilderness thing work? And the wilderness is basically the wilderness. It's people have not gone there. There is no food. There is nothing. And what I think God is saying is that even though. There doesn't seem to be a way. There doesn't seem to be um, people who've gone that way before. There's no supply. There's no resources. Mm -hmm. Is that God is the ultimate supplier and he will make a way. So you can claim this over your life, over your family, um, that God will make a way. Mm -hmm. Let's do this, man. Yes, 
standing here Not knowing how you'll get through this test But holding on to faith you know best And nothing can catch you by surprise You've got this figured out And you're watching us now When it looks as if we can't win You wrap us in your arms and step in yeah. And everything we need you supply Cause you've got this in control And now we know that you made a way When our backs were against the wall And it looked as if it was over You made a way And we're standing here Only because you made a way Made a way Don't know how but you did it 
Don't know how, but you did it. Don't know how, but you did it. Don't know how. Don't know how, but I'm grateful. 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 And we're standing here only because you made and we're standing. And we're standing here only because you one more time, one more time. And we're standing here only because you made a way. He's making a way, people. Amen. These are just not good songs. They're truths that we stand by. They're truths that we live by. Um, because when we declare these truths and keep on declaring them and keep on believing them, God is pleased because this is his desire. His desire is to make that way for you. And his desire is to move you forward. The past we are saying is behind you. Come on, somebody. Yeah, the past yeah. is behind you. Your future is secure. Your future is secure. And that's why we move forward. We move forward because he's a God who's of the forward. I don't even know if that's proper English. But we're saying we're moving forward. We're moving forward with him. Amen? Amen. Let's go. All things are new and 
Jesus name we've prayed in Jesus name we have proclaimed in Jesus name we have worshiped and all God's people said amen amen and amen amen wow thank you so much my brother Kanji that was incredible and it's amazingly important for us as kingdom people kingdom business people to worship our God by worshiping him we put him first we declare that he's the reason why we're even doing business. And I want to just encourage you, by the way, uh, this is one of the things that you do to, to create an atmosphere for God in your space of, of work. Take some worship music into your workplace. As you get in, create atmosphere, create atmosphere of prayer uh, in your workplace. Because here's the thing, we want to just begin by saying that we don't have a Sunday which is spiritual and then the rest of the week is secular. For us in Church for Business people, we say that this whole thing, Psalm 24 verse 1, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, including this business. That's why we're doing it. So thank you so much for your uh, engagement. I'm so glad to see the rest, uh, everybody who's checking in right now. Uh, if you're just joining us, please uh, let us know where you're joining from. Uh, it's so good to just uh, connect and to see where everybody's coming in from. And also, uh, please, uh, there's a, a, a link at the bottom of this broadcast. It shows you a link to our WhatsApp, our business WhatsApp community, very specific community just for business people, kingdom business people. And it's a great place for you to ask any questions, receive any encouragement uh, for you in this journey that you're going through. And also a place for you to contribute to us as we shape the content for Church for Business People. And so very welcome. Love to have you uh, joining us. And by the way, we're going through the Proverbs Challenge right now. Uh, today is, uh, is, is the 20th of, of May and I know that many of you have been reading through this together and I'm really excited. So that's one of the other things we're doing in that community is encouraging each other with God's word pertaining to our business. So I want to just read a question that was sent by a member of the business community. Her name's Anne, Anne Shanice. Uh, big shout out to you, Anne. I hope you're watching. Uh, she said, Sam, look for money to start business. But what if you already have money but no business idea? And then she has she has the thinking icon, you know, the one on WhatsApp. And I like that, Anne. Uh, so you're saying, I mean, people here don't have business, but they don't have money. But there's some people who have money, and those are called investors. Uh, and they're thinking, what do I do to start a business? Uh, and I think what you're really asking is, what kind? How do I know what business I should go into? So I'm going to just say very briefly, because I, I don't have very much time today, but I'm going to talk about three things. And I'm, uh, I, these three things are from the book seasons i wrote a book called seasons i talk about how do you discover your purpose how do you discover your niche and your contribution to the world that's one of the things we talk about in the book seasons it talks about three things number one strengths and number two passions number three your problems or opportunities so what are strengths what are those things you're naturally gifted at you're good at uh you you know since you're a kid people say you're good at this or 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 maybe it's just something you find that you do without effort so what is it? Maybe some people are just good at math. They're able to just put figures together and they can instantly just know uh, what, what things add up to and everybody's looking at you and thinking, how did you know that? Uh, some people are good at working with their hands. You just touch things. Some people are great in the kitchen. They, they are fun. They're just instinctive at, at, at putting things together and they taste amazing. Some of you sing like, like angels. I don't know what you're good at. Uh, it may just be that you talk and people listen. You're charismatic, whatever it is. What are your strengths? And you know, this is one of those things you continue discovering as you grow. Uh, what are the things that, and, and ask people about? Number two is your passions. What are the things that, you, that, that engage you emotionally? It could be those things that you, are so, you, you so love them that you will do them for free. People won't even have to pay you to do it. You just wake up and you love to garden. You love to, to, to just look after the environment, whatever it is. Or it may even be something that makes you really mad. You know, you see, you see a TV program and it shows women who are being mis uh, abused and your blood just boils. And you probably think everybody else is like you, but no, 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 no. We are all shaped uniquely. And so what are those things that really rile you up, really get you engaged emotionally? That's your passions. And then number three is the problems or the opportunities. So what are the things around you, the, the challenges that you see around you that need solution? Here's the thing that most people don't realize. The purpose of business is to solve problems. Uh, Kingdom business is all about solving problems. Yes, money is one of the problems you're trying to solve to create income for your family, I agree. But an even bigger thing is what is the problem in the world that people need solutions for? Because if you find a way to solve people's problems and do it profitably, they'll pay you for it. So, so what, what are some of the problems you see around you? We need to cultivate an a perspective of seeing problems and not overlooking them. Sometimes what we do, especially in this part of the world, you see problems and you create your own privatized solutions to get over them. There are potholes in your road and you find a way to get gumboots or to buy a car which has four wheel drive so you don't fill the potholes. But you know what? Every time you figure out a solution to people's problems, 
uh, and you, if you become good at solving people's problems, then they will pay you for it. So those three things. And when you find a nexus of things that you're strong in, you're passionate in, and that you can actually solve problems, real problems that people are facing, that's always a good uh, so a place to start drifting you, drawing into business. We're going to talk more about this because I want to bring a friend of mine to talk about this on this show. I think it's an important question that you've just asked. But, you know, this month I want to, or, or today, I want us to talk to a good friend of mine. You've met him already. We've actually talked. Uh, I've had him twice on the show already. And I, I, since he was so generous to give his time, I thought I'm not going to let him go while I still have him. And I know many of you have already written to me and said how much you've appreciated having Leonard Mcharo as a CEO of Savo Limited. He's been on our show the last couple of weeks. We're going to have him again tonight. Uh, he talked about um, funding your business. Today, we want to start talking about staffing your business, bringing the right people uh, who will help you achieve the dream that God has given you. And so uh, he's a morning person. So the recording you're about to watch, we recorded at five in the morning, which my goodness, that's a man after my own heart because I'm a morning person as well. And so uh, without further ado, here's Leonard. All right. Well, thank you so much. It's great to see you again, uh, uh, Mr. Leonard Mcharo. Uh, Leonard is the CEO of Savo Limited. We've had a couple of times to we've interviewed him the last couple of weeks. Uh, Leonard actually got a haircut, which is why he looks so different. He had a lot of hair the last uh, <laughs> the last interview we did together. <laughs> and so, just I have to reintroduce you in case guys are like, "So who's yeah. this new guy?" Uh, it's really good to see yeah. you this morning. Uh, let's let's talk new, a bit of it. Yeah, new, new, new normal. New, new normal. normal. I know. Huh? You need to introduce me to your barber. <laughs> I'm the guy with the hair now, guys. I've never seen my hair. But, uh, but uh, let's let today we wanna, we're talking about uh, staffing your business, Because right? we're still in the place where we're resourcing, we're rebuilding our businesses after this challenge, uh, ch in this challenging season, and also preparing for the new normal, just like we talked about. So um, you. Last, I remember that you shared the three principles that have been foundational for your business. And if you remember, you talked about the fact that it's the right people, no debt, and having a cash buffer. And at the last couple of weeks, we've talked about what that having no debt and having a cash buffer has meant for your business in this time, and even how to go about building that kind of thing. But today, we want to talk about right people, mm -hmm. because I think you talked about the fact that that's a really significant piece for your business. So maybe talk to us about, as you began, Savo, maybe tell us a bit the story about how you discovered the importance of having the right people in your business. Mm -hmm. Ah, wonderful. Um, the story of Savo is, is, is interesting. Just, uh, there's a book we are studying together and now we are studying conflict and how conflict can be the start of uh, beautiful beginnings. Um, and that's some, somehow how Savo started. I, I had a business with very good business partners, but we just had different ways of looking at things. So as one turns 40, you begin to to consider what really matters. So I decided I'm going to, to start something new. Um, now, fortunately, I had read a little. So I knew I didn't need to have an idea. I didn't need to have a vision. I didn't need to have a, a business plan. I just needed to surround myself with the right people. Hmm. And, and so we, you know, we left the company, me and eight, some eight other guys. And uh, we started, they asked me, um, so where are we going? So them, I have no idea. But for as long as we are here together and we are able to engage, then we can move. So uh, Savo actually started only with the right people. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We began to do architecture at the beginning, but we knew. We knew that's not what we are supposed to do, but we had no idea what it is you're supposed to do. But just having the right people, gave us the confidence to, to get started, yeah. So from the very beginning, Savo said only on the right people. Now that's, that's very radical because you're talking about the fact that the, having the right people on board is even more important than even the product or the service you're going to be offering. Just getting the right team together is that critical. Let me, let me just ask, I mean, about, um, we did a recent uh, survey of our business community. And by the way, uh, one of the things we're able to do because of just having the, the church for business uh, people, business community, we're able to create uh, content that is very valuable uh, to them. And one of the things we found as we did a survey with the, the members of that community is that 40% of them uh, are owners, uh, are sole proprietors or sole owners, sole workers in their company. They don't have an, an employee right now. At what point in the entrepreneurial journey do you begin to think about bringing the right people on board? It seems like you started with eight, which is crazy. I don't even know how you pay eight people. But at what point do you begin to bring, I need to bring some people on board. Why is that important? And at what point do you bring those in? Yeah. 
Um, I think I don't know. Maybe it's because I I really never trusted in my in my personal ability to get everything done. But uh, from the very beginning, I always believed in partners. So at the beginning, it was just uh, before you start anything, get a partner, and then so that you're able to. Because I I think I have a lot of um, I have a lot of arguments in my head. Yeah. So I always believe in um, in exchange. A lot of exchange somehow seems to sieve out um, a better idea. So. I think different people have different ways, but with more experience for me, the question is never what do we need to do? I think I think you usually get it uh, wrong. The idea for me, the question always is, who do I need to have on board to seek for a solution? Yeah, because um, as entrepreneurs or as just business minded people, what you want to do is, okay, I want to sit, I want to work, I want to develop an idea. Then I want to get people behind me to help push this idea. Okay, that works, but I think it's suboptimal. I think it's suboptimal. But if you have someone or a few people, one, even one or two around you who are sharp and just really ask what needs to get done. Yeah, because see, as, as business people, we think I have I have an idea. I want to push it to the market. Yeah. But sometimes it's just good to ask, what does the market need that I can solve? You know, once mm. once you turn the the question, and then you're able to also turn the process. Yeah. So that um, who, then what? Yeah. Who then what? And it's interesting because we've talked about the fact that uh, one of the books that really influenced you was Jim Collins. Uh, good to great. And that's actually one of the principles he really talks about in that book. If you haven't read that book as an entrepreneur, that's one of those must reads with your team. Good to great. Uh, And he talks about first who, then what. And I think that's how you decided to start. So you started with a team of eight. You're you're the leader, but you had a team where you said, if I have the right team, then whatever we do is going to succeed. How do you, how do you find the right people? Who are the right people? Uh, what what are the qualities you look for that tells you this mm-hmm. is the kind of guy I want to work with or this is the yeah. kind of lady I want to work with? Yes, um, it it sounds simple, um, not easy. Um, first, uh, again, again, I've benefited a lot from other people's wisdom, other people, you know, books and stuff. The first things that I think I I copied from this fellow Warren Buffett get somebody with um, three key things. Number one is integrity. Uh, number two is intelligence. I think you want somebody who, uh, who understands, you know, quickly understands things. Yeah. Um, number three is energy. You want someone who is diligent. So without diligence, then you have, you have a, a, a lazy dreamer. Without integrity, you'll have a thief. So you want someone who has those three basic things. Yeah. Inter- and then once you bring integrity, the, intelligence, and energy. And energy or diligence. Or, or yeah. diligence. Yeah. Intelligence, uh, um, integrity, intelligence, and diligence. Yeah. yeah. Once they have those things, then you know you'll have a hardworking, hard thinking, um, good natured human being. Yeah. Um, so I think that's that's usually the first place to start. Yeah. But as they as they come on board, as you're beginning now to interview them, one of the things that you need to realize is above everything else, this person needs to be wired the way your company is wired. So that if you have a very strong hierarchy, this person needs to have a very, you know, based on, on hierarchy. If you have a culture of, of freedom and, uh, you know, a very free culture, you need someone who is wired like that. If you are creative, so you need, you need somebody whose personal core values and the company's core values sort of merge. Yeah. 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 I have I have made many mistakes on that, and uh, once you get it wrong, it, it it's catastrophic. Wow! Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to come back to that because I want to understand some of the challenges you faced. But yeah. one of the, you've just talked about it right now. You've built a very unique culture at Savo mm-hmm. of having almost like a round table, where yes. it's the best idea that that um, that gets on the table. You're not a very hierarchical leader. Tell just describe that a bit and what the mm-hmm. benefits of that have been as you brought the right people on board. How have you unleashed yes. them then to be able to get the best of them? Yes, okay. Our, leader, our leadership uh, philosophy is um, delegate almost to the point of abdication. So just delegate, delegate, delegate until, until you're not needed. Our rules are two. 
our company rules are two. Rule number one, use your best judgment at all times. And rule number two, there shall be no other rules. <laughs> so you see, now <laughs> this jigsaw works once you have the right person in the right seat. Again, again, important. Sometimes you get the right person, but they're doing the wrong thing. Yeah. Um, you are able to delegate fully. Now, now there's, um, uh, there's a beauty about delegation. If I'm doing something and I know there's a boss hanging over me all the time, I, I was never very good at, um, I was employed a couple of times, I was never very good at being supervised. I like to do things myself. So once you have someone and they know no one is supervising them, no one is uh, following through, but we have a, a path that we have created together. Remember, I didn't have a vision. So we created this vision together. We know, we have figured out together where we are going. Mistakes are allowed, failure is allowed, then please go ahead and do it. I'm always here for any, you know, because it's always um, a round table, eh? it's always cancelled. I'm always here for, for, for exchange. Yeah. Then people tend to take a lot of ownership. Yeah, because one of the things that um, uh, business people do is, I am the boss, I am the owner, you are the employee, you listen to me. Yeah. Yep, yep, Is it, yep, isn't yep. it easier for me to hire you to tell me what to do? That makes my life easier than me to hire you for me to tell you what to do. Mm. Yeah. So I think once you give people freedom, then they get a lot of responsibility. Yep. Yeah. 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 It's interesting because what I think and, and what you're saying really jives with what Jim Collins says, because he says if you get people who you have to manage, very seriously, they're the wrong people. So what you're saying is as you get the right people, then you're actually able to trust them more. You're able to release them more. And then your work is not necessary to look over their shoulders. You have agreed on the, on the, on the, on, on the big picture, the mm -hmm. what and the why, and now you've mm -hmm. let them figure out the how. Uh, yeah. So I really like that. Um, and so you're saying, okay, so you've got this culture and I mean, I've, I've been fascinated to see how it works. You, you've got this, you've got young people on your team, you've got older people, everybody sits around, you've got a kind of like a round table approach where everybody throws in their ideas, the best idea wins, uh, everybody feels empowered to speak. Um, I mean, that, maybe that, I don't know whether that would work, how does that work in an African culture when you've got you know, your intern can actually be the one who brings the idea that wins the day. How do you even, how have you, we, we, we need to just, what has been the value of this? What are, maybe let's start there. Um, what has encouraged me to do that is, is uh, failure. There are times, my wife and I have always been partners in investment. So every time I do things on my own, I, I failed. So I, I, I failed so many times I realized, uh-uh, um, wrong move. So just have people around. But I, I must put a caveat. We don't manage people at all, but we manage the system very tightly. Yeah, so there are parts of, of the culture that move, you know, you know, like a planetary system, eh? like the solar system, your planets and the moons and the asteroids, those things are in constant motion, but the sun is still. Yeah, so the core values, you have freedom to do whatever you want, but the core values don't change. You have freedom to do what you want, but the purpose does not change. Yeah, so there are things that are, are so rigid. So if you come in and you're the wrong person, you really get thrown out very quickly. So as long as we have um, tightened on the, um, on the core values, yeah. then people are able to think. So you have freedom within that. Yeah, yeah. So what I manage and my role really is to make sure the center never moves and to make yeah. sure that people are free. Yeah, yeah. So... Once so you as have a leader, your role is to keep that center intact. Is to keep it as still, as conservative, as rigid as possible. So when someone comes and then they get really frustrated. Why can't this change? Why do you have to do things this way? I'm like, uh, uh This is either yes, no. You're in or you're out. Yeah. Now we're going to talk about that because I'm hoping actually, in fact, now you're, this thing is such a big story. So we're going to have to even save some stuff for next time. Because uh, I really want to, I really want to talk about even how you create that culture for your team. How do you, how do you even, uh, as a team, you know, how do you equip your team to understand what the culture, the values, all that stuff. So we're going to talk a yes. bit about that next time. But one of the things I want us to end with is 
what are the challenges you faced in bringing the right people on board? Because I'm sure it has not been that easy. And I think entrepreneurs learn when they hear the pain of other entrepreneurs. What are some of the painful spots you've hit as you've tried to bring the right team uh, mm -hmm. on board at Savo? Mm -hmm. And, and um, I'm assuming, how many, how many staff do you have right now? I mean, what's your, what size is your team right now? Um, right now, the, the, the core team is about 20, uh, slightly over 20. Like is the core team. Then you have other people now on site and what have you. And of course, you have a lot of construction crews and all that. Yeah, yeah, 20, yeah, 20 yeah, at the yeah. office. So, yeah, yeah what, so, so what are some of the challenges the as you've tried to build this super team that you have around you now? Um, one, looking for performance before cultural fit. I think that, that, that has been a big mistake. And it looks very natural. You get somebody, they're very talented, um, they do a very good job. But then you, so you get blinded you don't see that uh, that center so you know the person is not wired like, like we are wired so they bring a lot of problems uh, within the office um getting someone because you like them or because you because you pity them or you know i want to help this person move from here to here so you you force when you're trying to force issues um once i had to let go of my sister my own sister we are very wow. close i loved her I love her still. Uh, we're living in the same house, and I had to let go. Why? She's very good. She's she's very talented. It's just that um, the culture and her wiring are slightly different. Yeah. So not being able to take a step and say, okay, we need to do this. So that usually hurts the company in the long term. It usually hurts the person also. The person that you're trying to 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 preserve within it hurts them because. If this is not my thing, um, this is not my language, and you're forcing me to speak it, so it's always very, very stressful. Yeah, because I must add that with all the freedom, with all the camaraderie and the hugs and what have you, ours is a, is a performance culture. The demand on delivery is, is ridiculously high. What we require from one person is very, very high. So when people come, they're not wired like us, or you, know, you like them, or you take too long to make a decision, or you let them begin to influence the other people negatively, it has, it has bad consequences on the company, on the team around, and, um, and on the person. Wow. So, mm -hmm. so I'm assuming then because of that, then they've been, it can't have been easy. I mean, when you're saying, talking about letting your sister go, those, those can't be easy conversations. I'm sure you've had some pain in the team as a result of some of those decisions. Oh, oh yes. Oh, yes. Uh, letting go of people is never easy. Um, as, a, as, as the, at the beginning, you see, the, 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 the misunderstanding is that if a company is good, then people come and stay. No, that's, that's not true. Yeah? If a company is good and the center doesn't change, it means only the right people stay. So our turnover, especially at the beginning, has been extremely high. Until now, we have been forced to, by, by the circumstances and the pain of letting people go, it now takes a year to be employed at Savo, <laughs> a full year. Mm -hmm. You come in and you'll be an intern for a year. Mm. No, no commitments. Yeah. So every three months we review. Every three so you, months we review. So, so you, take that is hire, that we, you take a long time to hire. Because yes, because we realized we, we looked for different ways of, of, of hiring and different ways of interviewing. We, we couldn't get it. So we, just, we, we realized someone can fake it for three months. Uh, but by month number eight, month number nine, then you get to know them. Or we mm -hmm. can fake it. For three months, yeah. But by month now, because now it's, it's it has become a mutual interview. As we are interviewing you, you are also interviewing us. So actually, from this year, we decided anybody who comes in, you have to do a year. Wow, yeah. wow, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I mean, this is amazing. Picking the right people first, who, then what? Yeah. Getting, making sure even as you're starting your enterprise, you're thinking about who are the people you work with, uh, because this journey can—it's the journey of entrepreneurship. You need people to walk around. Uh, with you. And it's amazing for me to hear about a man who started a company with eight people. Uh, he already, it was, he was so fastidious about just, I must get the right people even before we start doing the right thing. So we're going to come back next week. We're going to be talking about some of the things about your company values, how you make sure that those are inculcated. You, you've kind of hinted about the internship. We're really curious about learning how you're doing that. And so uh, thank you so much. And I uh, really appreciate just being able to hang out with you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very, very much. Awesome. Wow. <laughs> Man, I really love, like I said, Leonard and I have been going through the Proverbs Challenge together. 
uh, with a group of guys and every time he speaks there's always something that God is using him to speak to the rest of us and I mean we are sharpening each other the Bible says as iron sharpens iron so one person sharpens another I hope you're in a Proverbs challenge group as well and that you're growing together with others in this journey and by the way I'm going to just give you a little heads up in June we're going to be doing the Proverbs challenge reloaded so we want to actually read the book the second time around. Maybe some of you haven't had a chance to read it. This is a time for you to start planning for it because we're going to be going again through it. Uh, but number two, maybe you read it alone. And this what I want I'd encourage you to do is raise a few other people around you that you can go through the book of Proverbs with. Call four of your friends, five of your friends and say, hey, we're going to read this one chapter a day in the book of June. And I'm telling you, you're going to be in for incredible blessing. And then number three, if you've been already reading it with a group, challenge them to get their own friends. And you know what's going to happen is that they're going to become their coach as they're taking other people through it. We want to create a viral revolution of wisdom. In this new season, we know we need wisdom for a new normal. And we want as many of God's people walking through this journey as possible. And here's the thing. Proverbs is choked full of wisdom for our businesses. And so really exciting uh, to, to have all of you here. We're, we're talking today about why, why it's so important to get the right team into your business as you're rebuilding right now. Like I said, the research shows that many of us are in businesses with very few people or maybe just ourselves working, but why is it so critical to form a team around your dream? I'm gonna give you a few reasons today, uh, just sort of summarizing what we talked about with Leonard. Uh, three things I can think of right away. Number one, you'll avoid burnout. And by the way, all these are from the book of Proverbs. Uh, Proverbs uh, 11 verse 14 says, For lack of guidance, a nation falls, but victory is won through many advisors. You know, Solomon may as well have said, For lack of guidance, a business falls. You know, when you're walking alone, chances are you're going to find situations that you cannot solve by yourself. And here's the thing. Uh, so many people I know start businesses because they were good at something, because they were passionate. Just the things we talked about earlier with Anne. Uh, you're so excited about it, so maybe you're good at baking, so you started a bakery. Uh, maybe you're a good accountant and uh, really, really good with figures. So you started doing tax uh, consulting for, for people, tax returns for people. The next thing you knew, you are running a practice. Uh, but many people, they start and then they realize when they started, oh my goodness, running a business requires so much more than the skill that people know the business for. Know what I'm talking about? Uh, you're going to find out very quickly that it takes so many skills. You're going to need to be good in marketing. You're going to need to be good in sales. You're going to understand procurement. You're soon going to understand why you need to understand accounting and tax and logistics. I mean, these are just a few of the skills you're going to need to have a successful business. And these are the things that you don't know that will sink you. So many people find themselves in a place where they are hating the business they started, wishing they could even get out because now they feel trapped by this thing that they loved so much at the beginning. So, so getting a team of people around you will give you the necessary skills to ensure that you succeed. Uh, you know, it's interesting, Richard Kiyosaki, uh, famous for Richard Poor, that he, he talks about the four quadrants. He, he has a, a book, a far better book, I think, uh, that many people don't talk about as much. It's called a Cash Flow Quadrant. And it's actually one of my favorite business books. He talks about the four quadrants that uh, most people who are, 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 are fit themselves in. He talks about the E for the employed. And those are the people who are in a job. They, 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 they have a job, you know. And then there are people who are in the S quadrant, which are the people who are self-employed. They own a job. Then there are the people who are in the E quadrant, uh, the, the B quadrant. And the B quadrant are the people who are business owners. They own a system uh, that, that is helping. They, people work for them and people are making money for them. And then number the, the I is the last one. And I is the investor quadrant, where their money now is the one that is working for them. Kiyosaki won really pushes us to try and get money from the B and the I parts of the quadrant. And you know, here's the thing about being self-employed. And many, many people, by the way, who call themselves business people, entrepreneurs, are actually in the S quadrant. They're no longer employed, so they moved into self-employed. They own a job. But when you're self-employed, it's much more stressful and it is much more, uh, it's much more work uh, and much more risky than when you're employed. You know why? Because when you're employed, you could go on leave. You could take a vacation you can somebody would pay for it you could take sick off uh somebody would be thinking about how to make sure that you have their employees treated well when you're an s when you're self-employed then it's all about you you don't work you don't eat and so here's the thing about uh understanding the importance of a team when you have a team you have a chance to become a business owner too many business people it's about you when you're sick your business is sick you can't even take a vacation and that's a horrible, horrible place to be. Uh, one of the things that I, I like to encourage business people, I say every five years, uh, I take a three-month sabbatical. 
Uh, actually, I, I take a six-month sabbatical. I encourage my pastors to take a three-month sabbatical. Uh, from Mavuno, I actually go away for six months. And I don't involve myself at all. And every time I've come, the church is doing better. Uh, why? Because I'm more refreshed. I'm more on point. I'm more ready for what's coming. And number two, my leaders have grown in the process because I'm growing a team there. I've got a great team that I'm growing. And I run business the same way. So, so here's the thing. You want to you make sure that you have a great team. Every great dream needs a great team. I think that's one of the things you need to understand. Is you, is, do you have a great dream for that business? Then you must have a great team. Number two, you'll go faster. So if number one is you'll avoid burnout, number two, you will go farther and faster. So Proverbs 14 verse 4, it says, Where there are no oxen, the manger is empty. But from the strength of an ox come abundant harvest. I thought about this verse quite a lot this last, last week as we we're reading this, this section of Proverbs. You know, it's so easy in this COVID-19 season to cut back on staff because, you know, the, those are called manger costs. Where there are no oxen, the manger is empty. So when you don't have people working, because oxen were really your means of production or your team, uh, when you don't have them, then of course you don't have manger costs. Your manger is empty, so at least you have the relief of that. And that's an easy, tempting way to go. I, I, don't, I want to keep my business cheap so I don't need people. But it says, from the strength of an ox come abundant harvest. What does that mean? It means when you have a team, when you have that team working for you, then you will have, a, you'll have harvest. Yes, they will cost you, but at the end, that's the only way you're going to have serious, uh, significant success in your business. Uh, none of us is as smart as all of us. When you work alone, then you limit, your, your company is limited to your brilliance. When you work with others, then their, their different strengths come into play. There's a great book, Jim Collins, uh, Good to Great, I mentioned that in the interview with, uh, with Mcharo. Uh, it talks about, Jim, uh, Jim Collins talks about Packard's Law. And Packard's Law states that no company can grow revenues consistently faster than its ability to get enough of the right people to implement growth. Let me say that again. No company can grow revenues consistently faster than its ability to get enough of the right people to implement that growth. And over the years, my principle has always been whatever I work in. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm, in, I'm known for working at Mavuno Church, but in everything I've worked in, I've always believed in raising a team, injecting talent uh, into the team. And so what that means is that I'm always able to grow. I'm always able to move faster and farther. A couple of years ago, several years ago, I took my job and I looked at the six essential functions that I carry out at Mavuno, uh, six very critical things that I was doing. And what I did is I picked six of my lieutenants, six of the people I've been growing over the years, and I assigned them each one of those roles. And I stopped carrying those roles. I stopped thinking about those roles. So what did that do? Number one, it grew these guys tremendously. But then number two, it freed me to start thinking ahead because Mavuno's vision is to be all over the world. And we can't be all over the world if I'm caught up thinking about the details of running the local enterprise. Are you understanding what I'm saying? That you'll be able to go faster, farther in your generation. You don't have to wait for the next generation to come before your business can explode. Uh, because you have a great team. You're growing a great team. Number three, your business will outlast you. So I've said, I've said uh, number one, you'll avoid burnout. Number two, you'll go farther, faster. But number three, your business will outlast you. Proverbs 20 verse 14, we read that today. It says, plans are established by seeking advice. So if you wage war, obtain guidance. <laughs> I really like that scripture. What it's saying is, if you want what you're doing to be established, it, could, it, it might as well say businesses are established by getting advice. When you have a council of guidance around you, then your business will be established. Too many, you know, this part of the world, we're, full, we're known for one generation businesses. One generation businesses. I mean, the business will succeed in the lifetime of the founder, but when the founder is gone, the business is gone. I admire some of the businesses globally that we see. I mean, we look at something like GE, uh, formerly known as General Electric. And this is a business that was begun in 1892. I mean, that is 128 years ago. It is still a world-beating company ever since its inception. It's still one of the global best, biggest uh, companies, uh, most successful. And that is having a season where they've had 14 chief executive officers, one after the other. And these guys are basically all over the world. That is called establishment. Why is it that we can't have African businesses, glo uh, local businesses established with that level? It's not because we're not as bright, uh, absolutely not, or we don't have the right ideas or the right products. That has nothing to do with it. I think the important thing is understanding how to leverage our teams uh, so we're able to build those kinds of succession plans. Uh, you know, here what happens is we have what we call Kamau and Sons, uh, and Kamau and Sons is a hardware store somewhere in River Road. 
and Kamau makes a big, I mean, he educates all his kids, the business does really well. What happens when Kamau dies? Sons are left fighting. They even go on the newspaper. They are fighting for their father's work. And within a few years, they've destroyed that company and there's nothing left of it. Uh, you know what? If, you, if we don't build great teams, then our vision will be just one generation or maybe not even uh, get to one generation. So, so these are things we must, we must be looking after. Now, I'm going to just talk very quickly as I conclude. I want to talk about the, the, what you start looking for, what you look for in team members. Mchara mentioned, he talked about integrity, intelligence, and diligence. And I love that. Uh, the terms I use are character, competence, chemistry. I think very, very similar terms. Uh, character is what Mcharo called integrity. It's been defined as who you are when no one's looking. You want to look for staff people. When you're looking for partners, when you're looking for people to grow a business with, look for people of character. Uh, Proverbs chapter 20 verse 6 says, Many claim to have unfailing love, but a faithful person who can find. You're looking for people who are faithful. You're looking for people who are available, teachable, people who are, who, who have, who, who are they when no one's looking? Are they, do they treat everybody the same way? Do they act differently when they're in the public limelight? You know what, as you, this thing is so important. Uh, we, we, I like to say character is king. Of all the things you're looking for in your employees, if you can find people who are trustworthy, people who are honest, people who keep their word, people who take themselves seriously, people who are diligent when no one's looking, then that's the first place that you're going to want to look for, uh, people like that. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to do a whole sermon on this. Uh, Sunday the 30th, uh, end of this month, I'm actually going to be talking about resetting our character. And so I, I'm not going to talk much more about that because I'm going to do a whole sermon on that. Uh, but the second is competence. So character is number one. Competence is the second. What Mucharo called intelligence uh, fits into this. I call it skill as well. Uh, the ability to get the job done. This is what we're looking for. The ability of a person to get the job done. You want to hire people of character. You also want to hire people who actually have the ability to get the job done. They have the knowledge, the skills, the expertise, the character, uh, the, sorry, the, 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 the training to get the job done. Unfortunately, too many of us, that's where we focus on. You're looking at somebody's papers. You're looking at what they claim to have read in school. Uh, but you know what? I always say skills can be taught. Uh, so the, I, I actually prefer to go for character and then teach the skills. But you're still looking for somebody who's hardworking and who's able to learn, who's quick to learn, who wants to learn. And then number three is chemistry. Uh, chemistry is what Mcharo referred to as DNA, uh, culture, wiring. He used some of those languages. Uh, and I want to just say this one is the easiest one to miss when you're hiring people. And it's a dangerous one when you don't get it. Somebody once said that culture eats vision for breakfast. In other words, you can have a phenomenal vision, an incredible vision. But if you don't have people around you, if your company culture does not support the vision, then your vision will never go far. So how do you get people who understand the DNA, understand the culture of the company? We're going to talk about this next week a bit because I want us to talk about how do you build a, cult, a company with great culture. Uh, Proverbs 17.1 says, It's better a dry crust eaten in peace than a house filled with feasting and conflict. In other words, I'd rather be broke, have a small company where we love each other and we're working well, than have this world-changing big company with a lot of money and everybody's hating each other and fighting each other. And some of you work or have worked in companies like that, where everybody just backstabs, everybody's political. That's not what you want to build in your kingdom business. So how do you look for the people who will support your DNA, support your chemistry. Do these people add value to the team? Do they thrive in your culture? Or do they just bring politics, friction, disagreement, disgruntlement, uh, wherever they go? You ignore, and I've learned this the hard way, you ignore this one, chemistry, at your peril. So, so that's all I have time for, by the way. I know that we can talk a lot more about staff and about people. Next week, we're actually going to talk a bit more about how to build the team culture uh, that will help you succeed. As you're rebuilding, this question is so incredibly important. Uh, I love how Mcharo said it's first who, then what. Uh, right now, some of you are starting from, you're, you're rebuilding from the ashes, you're restarting your company. The question I want you to really challenge you to start praying about is, Lord, who are the partners you're going to help me to grow this business with? We're going to talk a bit of next week about creating a leadership pipeline, about the kind of, uh, looking for the kind of partners you must, because Proverbs talks about that quite a bit. Uh, but today, I just want to conclude with that, that you must begin to pray and ask God, bring me the right people uh, and help my team, help me to discover and to put the right people. If I might have the right people, but help me to put them in the right places. Now, that's what we're going to be talking about next week. I want to pray for us as we conclude. Uh, I know that for some of us, as we're listening to this, it may seem quite high off because my goodness, right now, I'm just struggling to survive. 
I'm just thinking about how to even pay my rent, to pay my bills, keep up with my creditors. You know what? I completely feel you. And I'm going to be praying for you in a second for that. It's just that I, it's important for us to start reformatting our thinking. We can't stay in survival all our lives. We must start thinking up there about where we are going, about how we are rebuilding. And that's what this series is about. That's why we're talking about rebuilding with wisdom. And so I want to just pray for you uh, wherever you are. And let me just say this. Keep sending your prayer requests. Uh, we pray for you even during the week. So as you join, join the WhatsApp community, I want to just mention that again. Uh, join the WhatsApp community because you can always keep sending prayers about your business and whatever you're, you're facing in the businesses. And we would just love to be in prayer for you. And so let me just uh, pray for us. My Father, I just want to thank you for, for church, for business people. Thank you for all the business people who are watching this. Thank you for everybody who's making this an important part uh, of rebuilding in this season. Thank you because your word is paramount. And Lord, as we're reading through your word right now, I'm praying that you would reformat us. You'd reformat our thinking. You'd reformat our mindsets. You'd reformat our paradigms. I know that it's important for us to start to think like you. <laughs> I think as a, the, your word says, as a man thinketh, so he is. And I pray that, Lord, even as we think, as we get our, your, your word starts to shape us, that you would transform us right from the inside. So that, Lord, uh, even our thinking would become distinct and become different. I pray that, Lord, our businesses would become light, would become solution givers to our society. Lord, I want to pray for that person right now who's in distress. Even as they're listening to this, they're thinking about, my goodness, uh, things, are, things are difficult. I, I'm, uh, this business has not worked. I've, clo I've had to shut it down. They're in a place of maybe even distress and despair. And I thank you because you're a God of a second chance. I pray right now that, Lord, you'd encourage my brother, you'd encourage my sister who's watching this. And I'm praying that, Lord, you'd give them hope, give them understanding. Your word says that even though a, a righteous man falls seven times, yet he will rise again. And I'm praying for a rising. I'm praying for a standing up. I'm praying for a strengthening. I'm praying that, Lord, these fallings will actually become the testimony of the future, that they'll be able to educate and mentor many business people, telling them what not to do and even how to depend on God in their business. And so right now I speak encouragement. I speak faith. I speak divine ideas upon your people. Some of the people watching this are leading large enterprises. And right now they're thinking, how do I manage my staff? How do I keep them afloat? How do I keep these people afloat? How do I, all so many people depending on me? I pray for wisdom, Solomonic wisdom. As they read the Proverbs, give them nuggets, give them wisdom that would jump out at them and would help them to make decisions that they never would have made had they not been listening to you. And so Lord, until we meet again, I speak blessing over everyone here. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and God's people say, Amen. God bless you. Uh, please join our WhatsApp community. Look forward to seeing you next week.